LG brought me to New York City to review their brand new LG G6. And they actually left me alone in a room with the phone. And while the phone does look pretty cool on the outside, I'm here to see what it looks like on the inside. Let's get started. In front of me I have the LG G6 in two different colors, a brushed metallic silver and a glossy black version. These phones feel heavy and solid in my hand, and like I've mentioned in previous videos, that's a very good thing. My favorite thing about this phone so far though is the screen size. With that ratio, there is so much room for activities. The phone is completely flat too, no camera bump, no fingerprint scanner bump, and no earpiece hole. And no curved screen edge, which is also nice. When gripping a phone with a curved screen, like the S7 Edge, the palm of my hand always touches the curve, making the phone hard to use with just one hand, so I'm glad LG is staying away from that type of design. But seriously, I hope this widescreen trend continues. This is the best looking phone I've seen in a long time. But I'm also about that inner beauty. So thank you to LG for sponsoring this video and letting me analyze this thing from the inside. Remember, this is not an activity that you want to attempt on your own. The phone has an IP68 water resistant rating, which means that the back is sealed shut with adhesive. This is great for keeping the water out, but also makes the phone a bit harder to work on. Warming the phone up softens the adhesive. I also use a suction cup and my thin metal pry tool to lift up the bottom edge of the glass and slip my pry tool inside. The rear glass panel has a slight curve to it, so I'm using a soft paper business card to slice through the adhesive while not putting too much pressure on that curve of the glass. Once the back panel is off, we can see the golden contact points for the fingerprint scanner. The golden pads just rest on top of the motherboard to transfer signal. The back panel is made out of Gorilla Glass 5 and is surprisingly thin and very lightweight. The black and silver coloring on the LG G6 come from a light coating on the underside of the glass. This coating can be scratched off, but remember I'm scratching underneath the back panel right now. The exterior surface of the phone will not scratch like this. The letters I just scratched into the back are completely see-through, which is a good indication of real glass. And it's actually surprisingly resilient. It held up to two solid hits from my tweezers before I resorted to a pointy screwdriver bit to help me out. And here we see that the back glass panel is indeed 100% glass. Once the back panel is off, the rest of the teardown is pretty simple. There are 11 Phillips head screws holding down the mid-frame plastics. Once these are removed, I can lift off the wireless charging pad. Wireless charging is currently only available in the US at the moment, so depending on where you live, your LG G6 might be a little bit different. Wireless charging does not work through metal phones, which is one of the reasons why the G6 has a glass back. You can see the golden contact pads from the wireless charger that rest up against the motherboard. The loudspeaker is attached to the bottom plastic section. This uses the same golden pads to communicate with the mainboard. It's also interesting to note that the speaker is completely sealed off from the rest of the phone. So if water were somehow to get inside of the speaker through the frame, which I'll show you in a second, the liquid would not get into the more important components of the phone. The battery unsnaps easy enough, but there are no magic pull tabs like I've seen on some of the other phones. Luckily, some gentle heat softens the adhesive under the battery, and a little gentle prying can get it out. Notice I'm using a plastic tool for this part. Puncturing the battery with metal is very dangerous. I'll just straighten the adhesive out so I can reuse it when I reassemble the phone. Good as new. One thing I noticed right off the bat is that the sides of the battery are completely straight up and down. If you remember, Samsung said one of the reasons their battery failed in the Note 7 was because of the curved corners causing a short between the diodes. With the completely straight sides on this LG battery, that particular fail point shouldn't be an issue. LG did tell me they have multiple fail safes in place to ensure the batteries do not overcharge and overheat, which will help ensure long-term battery safety. Lithium batteries like this do pack a lot of energy and power though. LG did not give me permission to perform my next test, but since I have a pair of pointy tweezers, even though the battery clearly says do not puncture, instructions have never been my strong point. Watch closely. Even though I purposefully introduced a metal impurity into the lithium, there are no sparks or flames like we've seen with other phones. And as you saw from the beginning of this video, this battery had almost a full charge when we started, at 81%. That's impressive. A little bit of smoke, but no sparks or fire. Since the battery has been punctured though, I will not be installing it back inside of the phone. I am at LG, so I found a spare, and I'll be using the good, unpunctured battery instead. To remove the motherboard from the phone, I'll unsnap the screen ribbon, the charging port ribbon, and the front-facing camera ribbon. Each of these are just like little Legos that unclip from the board. 
Then that SIM card and removable SD card tray comes out. I should have removed this at the beginning of the video, but I also just want to point out that this water resistant phone has expandable memory. That deserves a thumbs up for sure. Flipping over the motherboard, we get our first look at the thermal gel that lies between the main processor and the copper heat pipe. The processor is the hottest part of a working cell phone, and there are several things working together to keep it cool. First of all, the frame of the phone is metal, and that processor is located directly in the center of the phone, and since metal is a good conductor of heat, the foam body itself is working as a heat sink. The bulk of the cooling is done by that thermal gel and the copper heat pipe though. This is even more effective than the metal frame. The copper is wicking heat away from the processor and pulling it towards the edge of the phone away from the main board and battery. Now I've always been curious as to if these heat pipe contraptions actually work. So I set up a thermal imaging camera with two LG G6 phones in front of me. The one on the left with the circle sticker has no heat pipe inside of it and the other on the right is a normal LG G6 with a heat pipe inside. And now that we are looking at the visible facts, it's easy to see that the phone with the heat pipe is performing much cooler. And a cooler phone means it will last longer and improve the lifespan of your device. A longer lasting phone is always a good thing. Now I always perform durability tests on my cell phones. And while this is indeed an official LG G6, it's still a pre-production device. So I'm going to wait and test the actual retail version. I can still analyze this device though. This bottom corner has the water resistant screen that helps keep water out of the phone. LG hasn't failed one of my durability tests yet, so I'm pretty confident in their structural integrity. There is a lot of metal inside this device. Up here at the top we find our headphone jack with its gold contact pads. The corners of this phone are pretty thick, and the antenna lines for signal strength can also be used to absorb the impact of corner drops, since plastic is more malleable than metal. I don't want to pick on Apple too much right now, but this Android phone has a headphone jack, removable memory, wireless charging, water resistance, and a screen the size of Texas. It's like comparing a Swiss army knife to some fingernail clippers. There are two cameras inside of this LG G6. The main camera has the optical image stabilization, which means that the camera physically moves around inside of the phone like a gimbal to stabilize your pictures and video. The wide angle camera lens is solid. It's only the main camera that has the OIS on it. I'll just snap these components back into place like little Legos, and then I'll move on to the charging port. This little component has both the USB-C charging port on it and the microphone. You can see the adhesive on the microphone stretches as I pull it away from the metal frame. This adhesive is part of the waterproofing. The charging port has a yellow rubber ring around the tip that helps keep water outside of the phone. Now the average person is never going to attempt any of this, but it's still interesting to see how all of these components are assembled. The front screen also has adhesive all around the edge. I was able to push up on the glass from underneath the frame to start a gap and then slide my pry tool all along the edge to cut through the adhesive. I notice the corners of the LCD aren't actually corners, they are rounded. This is interesting because it eliminates one of the most fragile parts of the LCD, the corner. Hopefully this small change will help keep the LCD itself from cracking underneath the glass layer if it's ever dropped. It's also interesting to note that the metal frame is shaped like an I-beam. The same structural shape is used to add strength to the metal beams inside of skyscrapers. Assembling the phone is easy enough, just pop the LCD back into the slot. A new LCD would come with additional adhesive, but I'm just going to reuse the old one. After the LCD is in place, I can get the charging port back in. The motherboard is tucked underneath the ribbon cables. Then I can snap everything back into place like little Legos, including the new battery. The back black plastic clicks in as well and the 11 Phillips head screws hold it all in place. Huge thank you to LG for letting me borrow their phone for a few minutes. I'm looking forward to using this phone in real life. All of the behind the scenes for this video will be posted on my Instagram and Twitter. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it in the future, hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around.